square root. What is the square root of 4? When you see the square root, it says, well, what positive number? It can't be negative. When you see that little hook on it, the number has to be positive. What positive number? If you multiply it by itself, the answer is 4. Plus 2, right? Minus 2 times minus 2 is 4. You're right. But the square root of 4 is only plus 2. It can't be a minus 2. It has to be a positive number. What is the square root of 9? 3 times 3 is 9. What's the square root of 16? 4. 4 times 4 is 16. What's the square root of 25? What's the square root of 36? What's the square root of 49? Square root of 64? 8. Square root of 81? 9. The square root of 100? 10. What's the square root of 7? Good luck. They will give you that. They'll get approximate. That means you have to have a calculator that has a square root on it. So we go square root of 7. I know I have a square root, but I just got to see it first. It's probably looking at me. I just don't see it on this. Oh, I see it right here. It's in blue, so I got to hit the two keys here to get to it. See the square root? I go, what's the square root of 7? Close the parentheses. Equals. Oh, 2.6. Four, six. If this said to you approximate the square root of 17, I can't think of a number if you multiply it by itself, the answer is 17. So we have to go to the square root of 17, 4.123. I'm rounding, but notice if I take 4.123 and multiply it by itself, I should be very close to 17. Ready for that? 16.999. Because I'm rounding the answer. If I take 2.646 and I square it or multiply it by itself, it should be very close to 7. 7.001. So when they ask you to approximate the square root, you don't have any other option but to use a calculator. These numbers, you know, we know most of them. Now, some of you probably remember seeing something called Pythagorean's theorem, spelled P Y T H. Looks like Pythagoreans. And the Pythagoreans theorem or Pythagoreans theorem says if you have a right triangle, right means one angle is 90 degrees. The side that's opposite to that angle, we're going to call it C. The other two sides, doesn't really matter which one is which. One is A, one is B. I could have reversed the A and the B. It doesn't change anything. This rule says what? C squared equals what? Anyone remember that one? A squared plus B squared. That's only true if you have a 90 degree angle. Only. The only time this one square will equal this one square plus that one when you have a 90 degree angle. C is the hypotenuse, C is the hypotenuse correct. So guess what? Carpenters now, when they're trying to find out if the wall is actually a 90 degree angle or not, they're building two walls. They want to make sure that angle is 90 degree because if it's not, the whole structure is crooked. So what they do, they start from this edge, they go and they mark the four foot mark. So that's four feet. 
They go in this direction, they mark three feet here. Then they measure the distance between them. If that distance is five feet, they have a 90 degree. If it's not five feet, they don't have 90 degrees. You ask every carpenter, they'll tell you three, four, five. That's how they know they have a 90 degree angle. Because that applies to Pythagorean's theorem. It says, okay, this is five, so five squared has to equal, doesn't really matter which one's A, which one's B. If I call this one A, A is four, that means B is what? Three. 25, is that equal to 16 plus nine? What's 16 plus nine? 25. So if your wall is crooked, let's say it was like this, crooked, and this is four feet, this is three feet, when they measure that distance, you can see it's going to be more than five. Right? Mm -hmm. So let's say uh, they measure, oh, that's 5.1 foot. Well, they come into Pythagorean's theorem, it says, if you have a 90 degree angle, if this is 90 degrees, which we're not sure, if this is 90 degrees, then C squared equals A squared plus B squared. 5.1 squared should equal four squared plus three squared. This is 16, this is nine, this is 25 on the right side. Let's look at the left side. What's 5.1 when you square it? Twenty six point oh one. Are these two are equal? No. So the wall is not ninety degree. You start pushing till this becomes five feet. Once you get the five feet, that guarantees that angle is ninety degree angle. Because this theorem is only correct if you have a ninety degree angle. We use Pythagorean's theorem all the time. I always tell the same story because that happened to me. In 1996, I wanted to uh, side my house. My father-in-law at that time said, you know, I have a friend of mine who's just siding. He can help you do it. You don't have to pay somebody to do it. Sounds good. So I got a guy came to help me. He was like 76 years old. He can't climb the ladder, so I'm going to side now. And my house is really high in the back. I have a walkout basement, the first floor, second floor in the attic. So I'm trying to reach the peak of the house. And I have a 50 foot extension ladder, 50, 50 feet. And I had it almost like four feet from the, the base of the house, which is not too far. So it's not really stable. Like if you lean backward, you will tip backward. But I wanted to reach the top, and I couldn't. Like, I want to reach the last piece. Now, the question is, okay, if I put this four, four feet back, how high would it reach? It's not going to be 50. It's going to be below 50. Because if I take that ladder and put it directly against the house, it should reach what? 50 feet. So if it's back, it should be below 50. So what's the height of that? How high would it go if I put it four feet? Well, that's Pythagorean's theorem. Now, I know what you're thinking. You go, well, probably 50 minus 4, which is what, 46? Not even close. C squared equals what? A squared plus B squared. C is 50. A is 4. What's 50 squared on your calculator? 2,500. What is 4 squared? 16. Bring that 16 or subtract 16 from both sides to get rid of that. Remember solving equations? What's 2,500 minus 16? Which is 2,484. This is squared. So if I want to know how high would it go, I'll take the square root of that number. Because what number, if you multiply it by itself, will give me 2484? The answer is the square root of that. 
So what is the square root of that number? And it reaches what? 49.8 feet. Almost, if you put the ladder against the house, drop four inches this much. Now the other part, which I didn't think about at that time, because I left it like this and I did the siding, but I was terrified because I thought if I lean backward, that thing will tip. So I was planning for that. I went on the roof, I tied a rope to the chimney, I threw it to me, tied it around my waist. So if that ladder goes flying, I'm dangling up there. I'm not falling with it because I'll be dead. But what will happen if I move that ladder now 10 feet back? That 50 foot ladder now, it's 10 feet back. Now people think it's gonna reach, now that'll be more stable there, but people think, oh, it's gonna go probably, what? 40 feet? Oh no, oh no, no, no. Pythagorean's theorem. 50 squared equals 10 squared plus h squared. 2,500 equals what? 100 plus h squared. Subtract 100 to get rid of this number. h squared equals what? 2,400. And how high would it go? The square root 2,400. How about 49 feet? So I could have moved my ladder back 10 feet, made it more stable. I'm not giving anything in height. I'm only losing this much. That's it. So what is the square root? Here we go. The square root of 2,400, just to show you that number. 48.99 feet. So by moving it back 10 feet, I just made that ladder way more stable. I only gave up. 0.8 of a foot, like six, eight inches probably. That's it. But I wasn't thinking math at that time. I cited. But if I use my math, you know, I could have been, uh, my kids could have been orphaned just because I wasn't thinking. You can use that for baseball. You can use it for any shape there. I'll do one more example on that. You have a Christmas tree. You decide you're going to put a Christmas tree in your yard. The weather's supposed to be nice tomorrow. You go outside. You buy this Christmas tree before the snow comes in. And you get that Christmas tree. Here we go. And you want to make sure now that tree doesn't go blowing in the wind. You're going to tie a rope to the top of it. So you measure the height of the tree. You go from the center to the top. Let's say right here, you're going to tie the rope. That's six feet tall. And you're going to tie a rope. It's going to go right here, which is like, let's say, 10 feet away from it, from this end to that end. And you're going to do the same thing on that end. So. What is the length of that rope that you need to buy each side? How long each side will have to be that you can tie it or attach it six feet to the tree and 10 feet away from the tree? How many? How can it be four? Four when you even reach the bottom, right? The whole height is six feet. So you need six feet just to touch the ground if you just let it go straight down. So it has to be way more than six feet. Well, let's see. We're not going to guess on it. Let well, the math do the work for us. I'm looking for that side. That's Pythagorean's theorem, right triangle. L squared, that's the length we call it L, equals 10 squared plus what? 6 squared. That's 100 plus 36. 136, what's L equal to? The square root of 136. Eleven point seven feet. 
Maybe you want to add an extra foot so you can tie a knot here and tie a knot here. So you got 12, 13 feet for this, 13 feet for that. That should do it. Because you got to attach it here. So you're going to use some of that rope to tie something here. And the same thing right there. So if you got a 13 foot here, 13 foot, you should be able to hold that Christmas tree into the ground. And now when it snows tomorrow, it will be beautiful. <laughs> or Wednesday. Cover with six inches of snow. Will look gorgeous. But a lot of people look at the numbers. Six and ten must be sixteen. Oh no, it's not straightforward. The same thing with the ladder. They think you move the ladder ten feet, it's gonna drop ten feet. It doesn't. Ten feet drop one foot. <laughs>